announcing the arrival of His Excellency President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. Uh, yeah, I'll take this off so you can hear me properly. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, uh, please, please take your seats. Uh, I uh, thought that since today we had our first cabinet meeting, that uh, I would like to report to to you uh, more or less what uh, what was discussed. As can be expected, um, we we were I think we were on, we were there until one o'clock. We were there for four hours, uh, but in, we hadn't we were still weren't able to cover everything. Ang nakapag uh, nakapag present at uh, the, we had the discussions where the economic team. Uh, who were able to put out the general principles that they would like to do. Uh, then followed uh, by uh, uh, Indai Sara, who gave, her, who gave her ideas on uh, how we will return slowly to face-to-face, -to -face, uh, uh, in uh, the face-to-face -face, face -to -face education in the next semester, uh, after which we talked uh, with the Department of Transport. Uh, at great length about uh, some of the um, some of the plans that we have for to support the return of our students to uh, face to face. Uh, so that's generally what was spoken about. Hindi kami hindi kami natapos uh, simply because there was so much to talk about. So I am uh, planning uh, perhaps for the next uh, two or three weeks to accelerate the number of cabinet meetings, baka two a week muna, hanggat maliwanag na maliwanag na, it's important to me that the entire cabinet understands what it is we are trying to do, how we are going to do it, what the timetable is, and uh, how it all fits together. Uh, and that's what we, uh, we made a good start on today. Um, before that, yesterday, as I'm sure, as, as you have uh, reported, I was, uh, I went to the uh, Department of Agriculture so that I could also uh, get a good idea of exactly what needs to be done. Uh, because as I have uh, stated so many times, the question, uh, the problems in the agricultural sector are primary to all that we are hoping to do. Uh, we cannot do many of the things unless we can see that the agricultural sector has strengthened. Uh, food supply is uh, such an important, uh, such an important part. Uh, it is an existential part of our of our work, and so that is something that we have to be very, very careful with and attend to properly. Uh, as has been reported, essentially what we spoke about were. Uh, the uh, the concerns that we have in immediately, the immediate concerns that we are facing, and I'm talking about six months, the next six months, the next two, three quarters. You know, I mean, pinag-uusapan na pag sinabi namin immediate, uh, and that, of course, when I'm when I was in the Department of Agriculture, that was mostly concerned with the food supply. Uh, in the next two quarters. I'm sure you are all aware of what's happening around the world. You have all seen the effects of the increasing food prices to all consumers everywhere. And uh, this is what we are anticipating could happen if we are not well prepared. Uh, many of the elements and many of the variables that have caused this food uh, price crisis. There is enough food, but the price is too high. Uh, the food price crisis, uh, what the, all many of the elements, if not all, have been uh, been variables that over which we have no control. Uh, but nonetheless, we still have to feed our people, and so we still have to find strategies uh, to make sure that uh, those who are those who are in need uh, are supported by the government as best as we can do. So that 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 is this, and then there is of course the long term. Um, in the Department of Agriculture, where we re I talked about rebuilding the value chain uh, from the 
from the research and development all the way to the retail, uh, which is something I think uh, I've been talking about ad nauseum already. Uh, I, I don't know if you, you need for me to explain it all again, but it really is just to ensure food supply in the Philippines at a price that is actually affordable. Because we always have to remember it's all very well having food supply, but if no one can afford it, it's still not, uh, hindi pa rin, uh, hindi, hindi pa rin, uh, naka, hindi pa rin tayo nakatulong sa taong bayan. So those are the things that uh, we discussed. The, in, in the cabinet meeting today, parang ganun din eh. uh, we talked about immediate concerns and then we had to talk about long-term concerns uh, because that is, we have been, we have been very, um, we are trying, we're trying in, uh, as we attend to immediate concerns, uh, we are also trying to streamline the government so its function is better, its function is much more uh, efficient and uh, uh, more easy and easier for the public as they have to do business, whatever business they have with the government, that it is uh, easier and simpler and safer and more secure to do. So these are the, the, the different things that, of course, we spoke to it in, in much greater detail. Um, and I think uh, we will, as I said, I think that we will, I want to make sure that every department, every agency uh, has already the, uh, has already the, the, the plan in mind para coordinated naman ang ating cabinet, uh, uh, the secretaries with each other. So that was the, that's the general, that's the general uh, gist of uh, yesterday's, uh, my, yes, my attendance yesterday with, in the Department of Agriculture and the cabinet meeting that uh, we had uh, earlier today. Um, so I think I will now open the floor to we'll a few take questions. questions for Ms. Maricel Halili. Hi, sir. Magandang hapon po. Sir, Good afternoon. Uh, may we know kung ano po yung most important marching order ninyo to all the cabinet secretaries following the first cabinet meeting earlier? Oh, you can. Uh, I don't think we can do, we can minute, say one. Uh, I think uh, essentially is uh, the, we, we, got in, we got into much more detail, so there are no generalizations anymore. Kasi we've been talking anyway for two months. Uh, matagal na namin pinag-usapan yung mga general concepts and general principles. So ang pinag-usapan talaga namin is already what we are going to do, when we are going to do it, uh, how we are going to do it, etc., etc., etc. So each department is, has a very, has a very different, uh, has a very, got very different instructions. The only thing that uh, we have to that 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 uh, came that it looks like is how that. We have to realize how interconnected all the government is, that uh, everything that's done on one hand affects uh, the government in, an, on, in, the other, uh, in another place, uh, sometimes uh, not to its advantage. So we have to be careful about doing all of that properly. So there isn't one single one. I suppose if there's one single one, is let's, uh, let's get our bureaucracy streamlined. I gave them, um, I said I will not, I, I give you a, uh, a relatively free hand in deciding who you want to hire and how you want to change the structure of your, of your department, if, you, if, if, you, if indeed that's what you want to do. Uh, but do it soon, because we have work to do and we have to get to work immediately. I think there are some, there are some easy, uh, not naman easy, but there are some things that are, that are immediately accessible in, in the sense that we can start doing something about it already. Uh, the first thing that, uh, that is an example of that was uh, in Daisara's announcement that we have a plan for full face-to-face -face by November uh, of uh, this year. Uh, September, we will start a phased uh, face-to-face schooling. Um, and I, that face-to-face -face will end up uh, in early November, as say already 100%. Uh, 100% attendance ng mga bata. Kasama dyan, 
we have to talk about also vaccination, et cetera, et cetera, uh, because there, there, there are going to be some issues that will be raised. So uh, as usual, I'm, I guess the, if I'm going to single out one instruction set quickly, let's get this done quickly. As usual, we're nagmamadali. Of course, we're careful, but we're always in a hurry because we have to get much done in very little time. Sir, on other issue, are you going to have a meeting, sir, with Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi? And uh, if you're going to meet with him, what will be the agenda? What will be the talking point, sir? Well, the, it's the usual agenda. Will be, we'll have, yes, I will meet with him. And the, the uh, agenda, I am sure, will be to strengthen ties between China and the Philippines. And, of course, uh, to find ways to work to resolve uh, the conflicts that we have. And one of the ways that I have con consistently uh, suggested is that we, uh, we have our relationship not only on one uh, dimension, yun lang West Philippine Sea. Uh, let's, let's add to that. Let's have the, uh, the exchange, cultural exchanges, educational exchanges, uh, even the military if, uh, if, that will be, if that will be useful. Uh, of course, the GTG is there, is, has always been there. The private sector joint ventures have also been there. Uh, but I think that the more we do of that, the more it will help uh, resolve the issues. I will also mention that uh, it's an important player, an important actor in all of this, uh, in, the region, in, the, in terms of the regional uh, geopolitics, will be ASEAN uh, and even APEC, uh, because they have a, in, they have a they have an interest, they are stakeholders in this. So I think we can, uh, uh, we can say that uh, we need for those, uh, for, for them, for ASEAN especially, to be uh, active uh, uh, for their member countries. Uh, so they, we, we, it's, it's essentially always trying to find ways to improve relationships. And uh, we have many, we have many proposals to them in the sense that, uh, as I said, we would like for us to increase the scope. Wag lang yung West Philippines yung pinag-usapan ng China at saka Pilipinas. Let's do other things too. Uh, and that way it will normalize our, our relationship. Sir, sorry, last na lang po on my part. When will be the meeting, sir? When will be? The meeting. I'm not sure. When is he scheduled to... Wala pang schedule yata eh. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let's keep it down to one question each. Pal, makarami tayo. Mr. Neil Mercado, Inquirer.net. If you're not here, the question was, inflation rate soared to 6.1%, the highest since October 2018. Does the President have any concrete plan to address this? Paano matutulungan ng mga Pilipino umaaray na sa taas ng presyo ng bilihin? Yes, we, of course, the inflation rate is a problem, not only in the Philippines, but uh, everywhere. Uh, our inflation rate, Anong we note inflation rate? Uh, right now, six. How, uh, what did the? Six point one. Six point one. I think that I, I will have to I will have to disagree with that number. Uh, we are not that high. Uh, we have crossed the our targets were less four percent or less. Unfortunately, it looks like we may cross that uh, cross that threshold. Tata with Dios four percent. Uh, that's why, uh, again, we have to think about uh, interest, rates le interest rate levels. But there is, a conflicting, there is a conflicting force in that exchange rate levels. The United States, the dollar, has uh, gained in, uh, in, in all, against all currencies. So the, dollars, the dollar has gained against all currencies. The specific effect is that uh, it actually uh, will, uh, will, will start to be part of the one of, it will be part of the components of the inflation. So we are having to be careful because essentially our economic policy uh, right now, uh, monetary, our monetary policy right now is essentially to uh, to use interest rates to uh, hold to take contr to control uh, the, the inflation rate. We are not looking specifically to the exchange rates uh, now. What we are talking about this, what we are specifically talking, what we are targeting are 
is the inflation rate. So that's what we are doing. Um, the increase in commodity prices are again uh, something that happens that uh, the, for the forces that have pushed the commodity prices up are again beyond our control. Much of our inflation is actually imported inflation. Uh, it, is impo it is imported because it is the inflation on the products that have suffered inflation that we import. So sumama na yung inflation nila dun sa atin. Uh, so we have to, we have to uh, when we analyze, we have to make those uh, categorical differences uh, so that to better understand really what the situation is. Ivan Marina, GMA7. One question, please. Mr. President, uh, what uh, support can the transport sector uh -huh. expect from uh, the administration? Do we expect more or continued uh, fuel subsidy? No. At gayon din po sa mga pasahero, what can they expect? Patuloy pa rin po ba yung libreng sakay at i-expand po ba ito? Thank you. Okay. Uh, good. I'm glad you asked. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, uh, we just discussed that uh, we are going to try not only to continue the fuel subsidies for the transport sector, but to, uh, to um, uh, expand it to include the tricycles, uh, which up to now have not been included. And so we, are, we, we talked about in the cabinet uh, meeting, we talked about the funding, where it can come from, uh, and uh, how we are going to manage the uh, uh, how, how we are going to manage uh, the funding for uh, the additional uh, fuel subsidies. We have enough budget, I think, to last for most of this no, for this year and a little bit beyond. Uh, but we still have to find that we have to find that money if we're going to continue. The Libring Sakai. Uh, what we have. What we have done is we will continue delivering Sakai, but what are we? What we are going? We are going to stop the um, uh, Libring Sakai in MRT three. We will transfer the Libring Sakai to students. Uh, sorry, I think I'm doing this wrong. Uh, we are in Libring Sakai continues as is. Yeah, uh, that 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 continues. Uh, but what we are going to do is we are going to do a, uh, uh, a program for the students because if they come in, we will fully subsidize first their, uh, their Pamasai. We'll phase it out because we cannot afford to keep that going, but students will ride for free on LRT2, which is going to the, uh, going to the university belt. Uh, so yes, so that's what we are. We extended the fuel, we extended the fuel subsidy, and we extended even we moved the the subsidy or the yeah the, the subsidy for riders uh, to the LRT to to take adva to 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 assist our students who are coming back in September. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Bettina Unite, Manila Bulletin. The question was, is there an immediate directive from the president after the DOH reported more than 7,000 cases of COVID-19 in the past week? Yes. Uh, so far, I think uh, we are still, because if we look at where, at where we started, uh, we still have the capability to handle uh, the, uh, the, the new COVID cases. Uh, luckily, the, when we, we should not look at the number of COVID cases in, this, in the same way as we looked at them in 2020 and 2021, because this is Corona, uh, this is Omicron. This is Omicron. Omicron is very different. It is very, it's a little contagious, but it does not hit as hard. Um, in fact, the general experience has been uh, people are down maybe for two, maybe three days. And that's like flu. It's like having flu. So we are getting to that point where we, will, we are learning to live with, uh, with, uh, the, with the coronavirus, uh, specifically with the Omicron variant and the other variants that are coming. Because of this, though, uh, the science has come back to us that for the original variants, mga alpha, yung una, 2020, um, okay na to have the two doses that gives you uh, good immunity. But with Omicron, you apparently need a third booster. 
a third dose, which is a booster, booster dose. So we will be encouraging that, especially for younger, younger people, because again, we have to be concerned about uh, their return to school. So uh, that's, the general, uh, that's the general policy. We will reinstitute again the vaccination, uh, uh, the vaccination drive so that we can, we can at least uh, uh, feel safer when, our, when the children go back to school. We have a last question. Lex Limitio from CNN. Um, <clears throat> Mr. President, magandang hapon. Good afternoon. Okay, um, let's go to Agri, no? And to? Agri, agriculture. Yes. So, I understand that um, your desire is to lower prices of food, right? Mm. So, are you inclined to approve additional import volumes for rice, chicken, sugar, to uh, bring down pr prices? And if you have any volume, indicative volume, mm. that you're looking at? We... we, we, we um, it has been used, importation has been used as a price stabilization measure. I don't uh, think that, that that is the primary that is the primary reason for the importation that we'll do now. As a matter of fact, um, the we are going to uh, we are going to try. You know, I think we will do it uh, in the in the sec in the Department of Agriculture to boost production of rice and corn in the coming two quarters, uh, hanggang Pasco until after Christmas. Uh, again, because there are several there are several reasons for that. Uh, the reasons because uh, we would prefer not to import. Uh, we would prefer to import as little as possible. Uh, so we should increase our own production of rice and corn. Corn especially became very important because the feed wheat that we were importing na cut off ang supply natin. So we have to uh, substitute it with corn. This season, the corn growers were able to come together and provide sufficient, uh, sufficient feed uh, for the broiler production. Uh, so, but we still have to increase production of corn to ensure that that supply, because there's also f there's corn for food and there's corn for feed. So uh, the, if, uh, if uh, we are able to increase production sufficiently, then hopefully we are the importations, it's, it, it, we really do not want, it's not, it's not really an import substitution measure. It is a strategic food supply measure. But, of course, if it's a uh, import substitution, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, so that's the, so that's what, that's the plan. Ang sa protein side, yun medyo tayo, pilit tayo because uh, when it comes to, when it comes to pork, uh, yung ASF talaga natin, hindi natin ma, ano, hindi natin ma control uh, for various reasons. So we still have to import uh, a lot of the pork products, not necessarily the, uh, but uh, the bro on the broiler side, uh, for the chicken production, broiler production, uh, we will also still have to import because there's a problem in the feed. There's a problem in the food supply. Nung, nung, nung mga, uh, and it's, yung production natin is not sufficient again. And that's why, that's why this is really the reason. If you look at it, it's, our production is not sufficient in pala, it's not sufficient in corn, it's not sufficient in livestock, it's not sufficient in fisheries. Uh, that is why I made agriculture the single, the, the, the highest priority of everything that we are doing. Um, because you cannot build an, a, a strong economy unless you have a foundation of a robust uh, econo uh, a robust agricultural sector, which assures food supply, uh, even in emergencies. And that's what we're working towards. Yan yung mga long term. Yung mga short term, yung sinasabi ko, in increase production for the rest of the years, habulin natin yung last planting uh, for this year. Uh, uh, they will mill siguro, they'll harvest soon, they'll harvest towards the end of the year, they'll mill soon after that. So, baka mahabol natin yung food supply problem doon. But still, those are short-term. Those are short-term uh, solutions. We need uh, long-term solutions. There are solutions that can, that can take care of this problem. Uh, we take care, we no longer take care of the symptoms, we take care of the disease. Uh, and that's what we are trying to do in Agri. We have a, we have a ways to go. There are elements kasi ng value chain na nandyan eh. 
Pero hindi sila nag uh, hindi sila they are not part of a, of a process. They exist stand alone sila lahat. So bubu diyan ang gusto natin kayo buuhin natin yon. Para may savings yan eh. When you vertically integrate, uh, to use the technical term, uh, when you vertically integrate, and daming savings all along the line. And that's hopefully at, uh, gets to the point that we can retail these agricultural products uh, at a good uh, price that's affordable to people. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you so, very much. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Uh, I hope we were able to answer at least some of your questions. Maraming salamat.